before I get started, could I just get a quick show of hands? Uh, anybody who's ever been fit for a pair of running shoes at a, at a running store before? Uh, so just, just a few. Um, so what I want to talk about today is, is kind of how to select a running shoe. Um, what you don't want to do as we get into the heart of training, you don't want to go to a, a uh, kind of general uh, athletic store and pick whatever shoe is prettiest off the shelf. Um, what's very important for, for us runners, our only piece of equipment uh, that's truly necessary is a, is a pair of shoes. Um, you want to make sure you're going to a running store uh, such as Potomac River um, to have take a look at your, your arches, have them assess you on the treadmill, running outside, whatever, um, so that they can match you to the right category of shoes based off your biomechanical needs. Um, basically, you, you'll come into the store, um, there'll be the three general categories of, of running shoes. Neutral, stability, and motion control. Um, the differences between these categories, neutral tends to be very flexible. Uh, this is appropriate for someone who requires uh, minimal support, someone who's very biomechanically efficient. Um, most likely they're striking with their heel, and upon toe off, they're towing off very evenly. Uh, so again, no, no need for any additional support um, or correction. A stability shoe is for someone who overpronates to some degree. Uh, overpronation is basically a fancy way of saying your foot rolls inward as you as you move forward. Um, overpronation is also 99% uh, of the time the main cause of shin splints. Uh, so if any of you have ever had shin splints or even uh, knee pain on, on the, the inside of the knee, uh, most likely that's due to uh, overpronation to some degree. Um, a stability shoe is for someone who's collapsing inward you know, to a slight or moderate degree. Um, there's also what's called a motion control <coughs> shoe. Um, you can see a motion control shoe is even more built up than the previous category. Uh, this is for someone who's overpronated to a very s uh, severe degree. Um, yeah. Speaking in terms of arch type, usually someone with a, a very flat mm -hmm. foot will yeah. be put into a motion control shoe because again, they're most likely the, the folks okay, that need that's, that's fine. maximum sure support. That's now, using the arch type is not always 100% accurate, which is why okay, um, we're well, watching we'll it forward check. motion as well. Um, some people with flat foot, with flat feet, are, are perfectly efficient. Okay, great. Hopefully I'll see you um, Saturday. However, you want to make sure okay. your feet are getting looked at, you're getting looked at in forward motion, and then uh, getting matched to the right category of shoe. Once you're in the right category, there's, there's a, a ton of brands out there that are uh, very reputable. Um, being a, being a New Balance guy myself, uh, they're, they're my employer, so New Balance is the best. <laughs> <laughs> but no, all, in all honesty, any of these brands are going to work well for you. Um, you want to go based off feel, you want to let your foot decide. Um, it doesn't matter that you're in an ugly shoe, no one's going to care. Uh, you want to make sure it feels, feels right on your foot. Um, most likely you'll try on three or four from each brand. Um, each brand is going to fit your foot just a little differently. Uh, you'll notice, you know, slight variations in the overall fit. You also notice slight variations in, in the cushioning system. Um, so cushioning is key. You know, if you if you have if you've had general aches and pains in your joints uh, in the past uh, during any exercise activity, you want to go with a shoe that is a little more high cushion. Um, kind of help absorb some impact. Uh, for the training we're going to be doing, we're going to be running predominantly on pavement, um, with the exception of our runs at Fletcher's Boathouse. Um, so a high cushion shoe does have uh, value. Um, life of the shoe. Um, a lot of people say, oh yeah, I got, I got a good pair of running shoes. Well, you got them four years ago. Um, a, a running shoe, for the type of training we're doing, will last you about one training period. Uh, so you buy a pair now, they should last you through the end of the race. Um, if you should do a race after that, you probably want to replace them. In terms of mileage, they're, ba they're, they're going to be good for about 350 to 4, 450 miles. Depending on the person, depending on what type of terrain you're running in, um, depending on whether you're, you're wearing them at the gym, in addition to your running, uh, and so forth. Um, for most people, that mileage range is going to be 
you know, somewhere in you know the six six to eight month uh, six to eight, eight month ballpark. Uh, again, for us, <coughs> over these next four or five months, we're I mean, we're probably going to be breaking the shoes down pretty quickly. Um, as far as price price goes, you definitely get a good pair of running shoes. You know, in the, the eighty-five to one hundred dollar range. Again, your higher cushion shoes are a little more premium. There's going to be up in the one twenty-five to one forty range. Um, and again, ultimately, yeah, you got to <coughs> ask yourself: Have you had any issues in the past? Um, again, any aches and pains in the joints, shin splints, knee pain? High cushion shoe has value. Um, you know, if not, again, something in the eighty-five to one hundred range will, will probably be appropriate for you. Um, the difference between a shoe in that price range and something you find at you know, Kohl's or Famous Footwear, you know, the forty to fifty dollar range, those shoes aren't designed for the rigors of everyday training. Um, so yeah, you'll save you'll save some up front, save some money up front, but you'll probably have to replace them, um, you know, twice uh, twice the amount of these. If that makes sense. They'll die quicker. Any questions? I have your run. Heavier runners, again, you know, it's, uh, there's, you know, 400 pound NFL linemen that are very biomechanically efficient. Um, so it, it really depends on your foot strength. Um, usually, heavier runner will want to go towards, you know, something a little more high cushion, a little more premium, um, you know, especially if you're just starting off <coughs> or returning to the sport, um, you know, it might not be a bad idea just to kind of absorb, absorb some of the impact. Um, but yeah, just to walk you through what Potomac River does, uh, they've got a foot scanner here. Um, so you come in, the foot scanner will analyze your arch type and measure your foot. Um, once they've got you down, they'll, they'll pull you a test shoe. Uh, usually the test category is the neutral category, because uh, that'll give us a good sense of uh, what, what, your, uh, what your gait looks like. So will put you up on the treadmill. The treadmill is linked up to a, a video camera right behind and it'll show your, your foot strike at a, at a comfortable speed. Um, and then again, once they, they pair you to a category, they'll have you try out some, some shoes. A quick note about sizing, usually you go up half to full size from your casual shoe. Um, men really don't have a, an issue with this, some women do. Okay, so don't be surprised if you're an eight in your loafer and we bump you up to a nine. Not a big deal, just a number. Uh, no one's going to call you out for it. <laughs> Any other questions? Obviously, there's a lot of us here. Um, we, uh, Potomac, Potomac River offers Team Challenge 10% uh, off anything in the store at all times. Um, if anybody wants to stay and be fit today, great. Obviously, we can't accommodate the whole group. Right? And where are the other locations? Uh, good question. So, uh, Summer Girl's got locations, uh, eight locations throughout the area. Uh, one in D.C., uh, the right by the Cleveland Park Metro Station. Uh, one in Rockville, right on the, uh, the Rockville uh, Metro Station Red Line. Um, Falls Church, Reston, Burke, Ashburn, and Right? Uh, is that it? How do they know what team challenge is? You can bring a t-shirt, but really it's uh, honor code. Yeah, if you just say you're with team challenge, okay. usually it's not a problem. No. Maybe they'll quiz you a little bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, Lisa, did, does JT have the handout?